Look out for distractions. Distractions. When you begin living for Jesus Christ, you have to know, and I truly believe this, demons are coming your way to take you off track, off the path to Jesus Christ. I'm serious. So, you may not be able to hang around the same friends, the same hangout areas, the same, for instance, beaches and clubs and stuff of that nature. This may sound a bit extreme, but you may have to self-isolate, meaning not so much stay at home every day, which you probably should do if you are able, in a sense, but self-isolate as in not really being around too many people, especially people who aren't trying to live for Jesus Christ. That may sound extreme, but it is not. There is a person I help with advice and stuff like that. And it is or it was, it is, it was, let's say it is so shocking to see how many or to see or hear the types of distractions that comes to that person. Very, very, very shocking for myself. Yes, distractions come my way, but not saying I am perfect, but I can, you know, I guess that is usual for me and I don't really think so much about it, I guess. But with that particular person, I am shocked. Like this person, as it seems, is sent people as far as I know, to distract that person. It is shocking. It is, in a bad way, amazing. Very, very shocking. I would say the majority of people that comes her way is a distraction. I am so serious. So I tell that person, look, if you want to know a person, look at their fruit, look at their attributes. What message is they giving out? Are they giving out? Are they adding to your spiritual life? Or are they trying to implant junk into your life? Which one are they trying to do? Which one? Distractions. For anyone, I believe, I don't think it is good to constantly listen to a person's garbage every day. Like for instance, let's say you are trying to live for Jesus Christ and someone comes to you 
and mostly what they speak about is negative, 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 negative. Now, someone may say, well, you are being there for that person. I guess that is an outside earthly view or opinion about that. But think about this. Will it affect you negatively by constantly hearing bad stuff about men, bad stuff about women, bad stuff about their father, bad stuff about police officers, bad stuff about every Like, how is it going to affect you? I believe in a very negative way. Distractions. Now, in some cases, you may have to minister to this person or that person, but other than that, in a sense, be wary of people who want to implant trash into you. I hope this makes sense. Everyone is not your friend. Everyone that comes to you for companionship, maybe I should say for friendship, they aren't eligible, I guess I can say, for friendship. Maybe, look, I believe <clears throat> demons can send people to you, and I believe God can send people to you. If a person is sent to you, and they aren't trying to listen to you about things about God, but they want to push to you things that are contrary to God, in a sense, trying to influence you, you need to stay away from that person. Otherwise, you may begin being like that person. Look out for distractions. You may be the type of person that really enjoy being around so many people. Maybe back in your past, you would probably say you had 100 friends or 20 friends or some large number of friends. So to be by yourself or to be mainly by yourself, maybe that makes you feel stressed or uncomfortable or whatever else like that. Look, I believe there are more people who want to not go by God's rules. So in saying that, that leaves, I guess, little room or little option for you in choosing to be a true friend to someone that is going to edify you, as in to build you up to help you or to motivate you in living for Jesus Christ. I hope this makes sense. Everyone is not your friend. I would say probably 90% of people that may come your way may not ever be eligible to be your friend. God may send a person to you for you to minister to. 
but as we may already know, everyone is not going to accept the gospel. So some people you may have to let go. Yes, you can try to help minister to people, but as far for them to be your friend, no. No. Because I believe some people are sent to be a distraction to you. So even if you are looking for a husband, wife, or whatever else like that, maybe I shouldn't say husband or wife, I believe some people are sent in a bad way. So don't be so hungry, or how should I say this? Don't be so thirsty to want a husband or to want a wife. Because if you are, you may accept anything that come your way, no matter how bad they are which would be so bad. So it is probably best to get rid of that. How can I say this the right way? It is probably best to get rid of that thirst that it is okay to want a friend and to want a husband or a wife but if it ever gets to the point that want turns to desperation to where you are readily like you are ready to choose almost anyone for you to get married to I think that is a weakness I think the enemy can use that to manipulate you. Learn patience. Learn to be by yourself. I think some people really dislike being by themselves. I think sometimes you need to be by yourself and allow God to work on you. There is nothing wrong with being by yourself. Because, like I said, I believe most people that come your way is no good for you. It's no good for you. Because with helping that particular person, I believe most people give that person bad advice or speak to that person about some things they probably shouldn't. I believe in a conscious or unconscious way trying to lead that woman back to her old ways, which is not good. Everyone doesn't have your best interests in mind. They may say they do, but in truth, they may not know they are being used by demons. For instance, Peter, if we go to the Bible, the Apostle Peter, I guess Peter was trying to tell Jesus in so many words, don't get crucified like refrain from that but peter was from my understanding of that situation peter was being used by satan so if peter can be used by satan your mom your dad your so-called friend can't be used by demons? I believe they can. 
So watch out for distractions. You may have to self-isolate, meaning be by yourself. Be your own friend. Talk to God as much as you can to give you guidance. For myself now, and I am going to be honest with you, I don't have a friend. I don't have a true friend. Now, some people may call me friend for whatever reason, but I don't have a true friend. I don't. I don't. I have a wife, but I don't have a true friend. Now, do I want a friend? Maybe. But until then, I guess I am somewhat okay with how things are now. I hope this makes sense. Like, if you meet a person online and you know, you may chat or text that person a few times here and there. Is that a friend? Or perhaps an acquaintance? If you meet a person in person and you talk for a week, is that a friend? Is it? A friend to me pretty much is a person who is willing to serve God for one. And a friend to me is something like a brother should be. So if you aren't that, in my opinion, you aren't really my friend. I believe people have this think in their mind to where they call just anyone their friend because, you know, you had a fun time speaking to them or you all can laugh real good with each other, stuff like that. No, I have spoke to spoken to some people and I can say this, some people have very selfish motives, very selfish, and they will readily backstab you. So they may say they are your friend, but they are readily or ready to backstab you or to toss you to the side so hey you said you are my friend but you treat me like this so be very careful of people who are so quick to call you their friend i have learned that I believe those type of people, maybe not all, but I believe those type of people are like opportunists in a way. Maybe they are your friend for now, but you know, at any second or at any time, you know, they can turn on you. I want no friend like that. Stay away. So I hope this makes sense. God bless you.